always get super excited when I get to speak to a fellow South African on this On The Mark podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, there he is. Uh, last time I saw him, he was a gray beard like me. Now he's clean shaven. Uh, he's Theo Besedno. Theo, how are you doing, man? Good in you, Mark. It's amazing to be spending some time again with you. Well, you know, the last time you and I spent time together was on your Instagram live during 2020, during the COVID lockdown. And it uh, feels like that was just the other day, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm not even joking when, I'm, when I say I'm, I'm getting goosebumps because uh, I was thinking exactly the same thing. And uh, we, we, took a, we took a swing for the fences, like your, your American uh, listeners and watchers would, would say. Um, you know, from being from South Africa and taking a chance on uh, on Mark Immelman being on our Instagram live, and you were gracious enough to to send us a nice reply back, and we spent about an hour speaking about all things Mark Mark Immelman and and CBS and all of those things, and uh, I'm I'm very very happy to for for you to invite me and and the shoe being on the other foot today. So thank you very much. You are making me a lot bigger a deal than what I am. I'm really just a golf nerd who has a show and folks tend to want to listen because people want to get better. Okay, so before we Absolutely. make it better, um, let's, for our global audience, put Theo Bezeda notes into context. So tell us just a little bit about you, please. Well, Mark, I, I always, when, when, when I work with clients, I, I kind of take the liberty of, of introducing myself first because... I think it, it builds a rapport. So thank thank you for the opportunity. Um, you, you say that you're a golf nerd. I'm, I'm a sports nerd. I became a golf nerd later in my life. Yeah. Uh, played the, the normal traditional sports in South Africa, cricket and, and field hockey. Uh, so for American viewers and listeners, that's the one you play on AstroTurf, not the one you play on ice. Um, mm -hmm. and, and my sport was going phenomenally well till about grade 10. And then my sport fell off the the side of a cliff and um, as luck would have it my, my parents were referred to a sports psychologist in South Africa um, he later became one of my professors Professor Ben Spain and leaving the session I can't remember too much of the session but leaving the session I thought well oh, that's a that's a cool job that's something that I'm going to want to do for my life and uh, it just happened to work out with uh, like I always say to my client like the same in sport with a little bit of hard work and a little bit of endeavor and a little bit of luck I ended up uh, becoming a counseling psychologist Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the idea was always to go into team sports. I never had that golf um, in, in my mind. And then I got introduced to the game through a, a friend of mine, um, got introduced to uh, a few golf academies in South Africa. And uh, my big breakthrough in South Africa came when uh, two guys were playing in the 19 golf here, uh, two guys on the PGA Tour at the moment, Dylan Fatelli and MJ Duffy. Uh, they actually won one of our national championships, if you want to refer to it like that. And I got a bit of a write-up in the Golf Digest and, and two of the big golf academies here uh, rang me up the next day and said they were looking for a sports psychologist. Would you be keen? And I didn't, like like they say in the classics, I, I kind of just ran with it. I said, yes, of course I know what to do. <laughs> um, I didn't have a clue, but but I, of course I know what to do and I know how to work in a golf academy. And that was 15 years ago. And uh, now, now I'm being interviewed by you. So that that's a short, uh, in, in a nutshell, version of Ruthie episode that is. <laughs> You go by BVP Sports Psychology uh, for the folks who want to go and find you. BVP is short for? Uh, beside note for Nick Oak Psychologists. Yeah. And um, the, the funny story about for Nick Oak is a, is a very good friend of mine and my previous colleague because in South Africa with our professions council, uh, being a registered psychologist, you, you can't use like... Uh, some of the cool names like you can in America. So, so we went with, uh, beside that, for Nick Oak Psychologist. And the funny thing about my previous business partner, Stephen for Nick Oak, he lives in New Jersey now and doesn't work as a sports psychologist anymore, psychologist, but uh, we shortened it to BVPSP. So it sounds a little bit cooler than, <laughs> than what it is. So that, that's the, it's almost like Berkshire Hathaway with, um, uh, with um, um, his name escapes me now, Warren Buffett. Um, because uh, Berkshire Hathaway was one of his, his worst business dealings. And uh, he said that he decided to keep the name. So I, I kind of had to keep uh, beside note for Nick Ake, but it ended up being BVPSP. Right. Uh, for our non-South African audience, um, Beside note is uh, a lot of folks struggle with Christian Beside note over here, but they got better with it. And for Nick Kirk, you'd probably go with Van Nick Kirk, I would guess. Anyway, but I digress. I'm going to now share my screen. So for the folks on audio, we are going to um, essentially just go through a couple, like I joked about, you know, having spent time with uh, Theo 
on his Instagram. And look, I still spend time with Theo by following him on Insta because some of these slides that you're putting out are just sensational. And I reached out to you every, every time I, I, I click onto your page, there's new stuff. And I was like, well, I've got to condense this stuff into like 30 minutes somehow, bring some some um, entertainment, certainly some education, definitely some game yeah. improvement, life improvement stuff, most certainly. And so mm-hmm. I figured I'd settle on three slides. So for, for audio listeners, you can find this on YouTube. Um, for the uh, for the guys on YouTube, you can go through this. Now, kicking this off, I, I just want to sort of give this the 36,000 view uh, foot mm-hmm. here. Um, you're putting these slides out and they look cool there in black and gold and 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 it, it, they're just easy reading but thought provoking and I would venture to say probably behavior and attitude changing. Um, is that what your goal was with with these? Because this I certainly get that out of them. No, thanks, Mark. That that's high praise. But uh, my my goal since since I started with with the sports psychology route has always been to to demystify the the mental side of sport and and then later in my life uh, golf because i think people get get sold a lot of clichés you know we we get told things like uh, you have to play golf with a with a clear mind you know you're not allowed to have thoughts um mm-hmm. you know um, meditation is is only for for the religious um, all, all of these things get sold to people and and i find that that there are some mental coaches and sports psychologists out there that have have done the mental side a huge disservice by by almost mystifying it uh, beyond beyond use um, and and also using cliches and, and things that don't work um, you know so I've I've always tried to simplify things um, if if you speak to any of my clients I hope that they'll tell you that that I've always tried to make sure that the mental side fits into their day and into their life not the other way around you know that. The famous uh, Yogi Berra saying about, you know, uh, sport is, is uh, 100% mental and the other 50% is also mental. Or I, I misquote the, the great Yogi Berra, but I, I, don't, I, I firmly believe that, that the mental side fits into your life and should have a, a pertinent part and, and a pertinent role to play. But it, it's a lot simpler than, than what a lot of people give it credit for. Um, and, and that's what I try and do with these slides is to make things simple, uh, make it applicable, make it relevant. Um, and, and give people some hope that, that you can be mentally tough, that you can be psychologically strong by doing some basics um, regularly, doing them consistently and doing them with intention. Um, so it's not just the top 2% that can be mentally good. Um, we, we can all get there if we keep it simple. Um, and hopefully with the slides, I'm, I'm getting that across to our, to our audience. Well, so much so that I think I reached out to Theo in the middle of the night when I was awake looking at his stuff. And, and here we are, folks. Okay, so... So I'm going to tee this off by saying, this is how you build momentum, because that was your capper to the slide. And and here's the statement you make. And and the statement to your observation previously, Theo, is kind of riddled with sports psychologist isms, confidence, motivation, resilience. And so you say, stop worrying about your confidence, your motivation, your resilience. Instead, focus on, and there's a list of them. So I'm going to just pitch you each one and let you embellish. Cool? Sure, absolutely. You said, instead of worrying about those things, focus on your self-talk. So go so go with self-talk because I feel like, you know, this thing is like I spend a lot of time, you do, around like high, high achievers, athletes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they contend negative, but some of the really good ones, they're their own best friend. They never really say anything kind of ill about themselves. They don't take ownership really of their mistakes. So, so I want you to talk about self-talk, please. Um, one, one of the first times that, that I ever spent time at a golf academy, uh, I sat at a halfway house and the guys were coming off and they, they, didn't, they didn't know who I was uh, from a bar of soap. And, and I just listened to the narrative as the guys were coming off the golf course. And Mark, I'm sure... You would have experienced this from the highest level to, to the lowest level in golf. Um, I always tease my clients and I say, no golfer sits down and tells you the three best things that he did out there. <laughs> they, will, they will come off and they'll tell you the three worst things. Oh. And, and I always like to joke about the fisherman story. You know, like the, the, my, my fish was big and my fish was bigger. In golf, it almost is like it, like it gets a moment, a negative momentum of its own. You know, you hit it 300 meters right. I hit it 600 meters right. You know, so... From, from a self-talk perspective and, and what people misunderstand sometimes when I say this, 
is they they wanted to be all positive, all optimistic, uh, all all happy go lucky. That that's what a lot of people think about self talk. Um, that, that's definitely not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to a, a very neutral, a very uh, objective and a, and a very basic self-talk around things that you know to be true of your game, that you know to be true of yourself. And you know, you spoke about about the, the top the, the the top athletes in the world uh, who who can be their own best friends. I I don't think you will find a press clip of Tiger where he refers to himself um, or his game, even at his worst, that he is hitting the ball poorly. It was always the narrative was always. I'm working on something and I'm working towards something and I'm going somewhere. So they, they have this way of managing their self-talk around where they want to go and what they are busy with and how they plan on getting to wherever that target is. I, I, I want to, yes, yes. I'm, 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 I'm resounding yes here. And, and I want to pick something out of what you said and help have you drill down on this more because yes. what you said, the self-talk they, they, they speak about, it, it's always like where they want to go there's a time element to this because they don't talk about what's they might reference what's happened but what's happened is that is behind us we're moving ahead now and there's always that i'm here moving that way as opposed to well i did that and i did this and now i suck so bad i'll 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 reference that and and i, I was listening to a, an interview a few years back with with cameron mccormick of the jordan speed that he's at his five years drought of, of not winning and and just listening to him as a coach and how his self-talk devolved around where they had been and how he said he almost perceived himself as being the worst coach because Jordan hadn't won in a year and then two and then four and then five. And, and, and he said that one of the things that kind of clicked in his mind was, you know, like we, we have somewhere still to go. Jordan Spieth is, is under 30. Um, and, and as you will know better than anybody in this game, um, perspective is a, is a very important thing. Well, in, in any game, um, and, and the greats, um, they, they always have a plan. What, whatever's happened in the past and what's ever happening, whatever's happening at the moment, there is a plan of improvement. And, and like you said, one of your goals with the podcast is how do we improve? And, and I always find that you can lament what has happened or you can objectively look at it, learn from it. My, my challenge to my clients is always the, the question that I think my clients hate the most is what did you learn? Whether you're talking about deep, deep world tour guys, whether you're talking about US kids golf, my, 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 my question is always what did you learn? Mm -hmm. Because if you can answer that question, you can face this game head on. It's always a learning moment, isn't it? So, so and, and I want to say this too, mm -hmm. going back to this, because I was looking at the slide and again, for the folks uh, that lost this. I want to say what Theo is saying here is stop worrying about your confidence, mo your motivation, resilience. Instead, focus on. I, I want you to just like kind of help us with that term focus because I feel like focus mm -hmm. is thrown around a bunch and then you mm -hmm. see these golfers trying to concentrate <laughs> and then they're like, well, and then they almost lose their minds because they're trying so hard yeah. to concentrate. Were well, you saying focus yeah. on your self-talk, breathing, whatever. What is focused yeah. For for me, that is is paying attention mm -hmm. with intention. All right. And and what what I mean by that is is you you you're not ignoring other relevant information. You just you're just trying to give uh, whatever I mentioned here, whether it's your breathing, whether it's your routine, whether it's your acceptance. Uh, you you're trying to give that more thought. You're trying to give that more. Um, um, Almost like a, you 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 um, building on that more to the exclusion of, of other things because let's be honest for any athlete there are a million things that you can focus on you know you can focus on the Max Homer recently such a great example um you know you can you can have a great round derailed by a guy who shots in his in his backstroke for three dollars he got angry he 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 had a go at the guy um you know and, and the old golfing psychology would be you know don't get mad. You know, he got mad. He had a go at the guy. But through techniques like breathing, through how he speaks to himself, getting himself composed before the next tee box. And um, I heard a great analogy the other day is that all golfers leave the road mentally at some stage during a round. The greats get back quicker on the road. And that's that that's basically what, what I try and work on with my clients and, and always what I'm always trying to teach. And and when you say what what to focus on. Um, you know, it's get back on the road a little bit quicker than, than the other guy or, or the other girl. 
Um, so it's not not to say that there aren't other things to focus on, but these things are basics, um, you know, self-talk, breathing, routines, acceptance that we can all work on. You know, whether you're a great golfer or not, whether you're a businessman, uh, whatever it is, you, you can invest time and, and effort into these things um, and you can build them as, as mental skills. Yeah. Hey, we have a slide on self-talk coming, so I'll, I'll sort of camp out there for a minute. The next thing is breathing. And I sort of giggle when I do this because the last time, like I said, when you and I talked was during COVID when breathing properly was a big deal. Um, but I've now over the last few years learned more about breathing and its value because it's almost like one of the, it's, it's essential to life, right? But no one really Absolutely. does it very well. So, so, so help folks breathe better so that they can uh, sort of singular, get, get their focus more myopic. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of, of giants here, Mark, because, and, and another thing that, that I think my clients hate in our sessions is I go, I was listening to a podcast and I learned this and I, and I, and I heard that, you know, so that's yeah. kind of my university. That's my continued um, uh, learning and development. And uh, one of the guys that I listen to religiously is a gentleman by the name of Dr. Andrew Huberman out of, yeah. out of Stanford. Uh -huh. And um, I mean, his, his stuff is absolutely phenomenal. And, and the way that he quantifies uh, things like, um, you know, uh, ice baths and, and cold showers and how he explains that absolutely phenomenal. So, but, but without going in, into, into depth there, um, w when we talk breathing and especially in a performance context um, and one of uh, Huberman's uh, great sayings that I quote to my clients all the time, is you, you can't change the mind by using the mind. Because if it were that easy, we could just say to ourselves, calm down, and we would calm down. If it was that easy, we could say, focus or concentrate, and you would concentrate. Now, you've dealt with a few golfers in your life. Uh, who, who are the golfers that you've ever dealt with when they're hot and the cold and you tell them to calm down um, actually calms down? No, nobody in the history of ever, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and using that quote, I, I try and explain to people that you can use your body through breathing uh, through body language, through uh, specific poses, all of those physical uh, manifestations, you can use them to get back into a state where you can perform. Something as simple as, um, you know, the, the, there's research that shows that that breathing um, in uh, speeds up your heart rate yeah. while exhaling slows down your heart rate. So something as simple as a four-second uh, breath in, a one-second hold, and an eight-second release of breath is very good to slow your heart rate down. Slowing your heart rate down slows down your breathing. Slowing down your breathing, and and so and so the whole process goes. Okay, I'm about to sell books for James Nestor, who, if you're listening, I'm still trying to get him on the show. He wrote yes. an incredible book called Breath. I don't know if you're familiar with it, right? Very um, aware of it. I saw a tweet where it's like, okay, you talked about different nostrils, right? And if you breathe in through one nostril, it slows your heart rate down and you breathe in through the other, it accelerates your heart rate. So I'm fascinated and I've so, got a five hour flight to the West Coast for whatever event it was on the PGA Tour. I get the audio book. Well, for five hours straight, I hung on every word this man had to say. Absolutely. From there, I then uh, reached out to Ryan Dewey and the guys from Cold Plunge. I've had them on the show for the ice baths. Um, I'm now a cold plunge ambassador and I cannot tell you how proper breathing, understanding of it, how it slows down. You can, you can almost control your central nervous system. The, the polar plunging does the same thing because you have to learn to sort of settle yourself, you know, which is paramount in high performance sport. In fact, Absolutely. my pastor, Chris Hodges, the other morning was giving a sermon about this guy. It was in the uh, Athens Olympics. We're back, back in the day and he was mm -hmm. like guaranteed to win the gold and not just win the gold but it was like who was going to finish second he was that dominant and it's in that rifle shooting the marksman right and yes. their skill to be so accurate is they actually slow their heart down and then they because you don't pull the trigger you squeeze the trigger and anything any reaction and you miss and so they slow their heart down and then they squeeze the trigger between heartbeats. And I was like, yes, that sounds crazy. But now that I know this stuff, so when I saw you talk about breathing, I was like, hallelujah. Absolutely. It's, it's just so important. Yet everyone 
or well, very few folks actually breathe like you would say, even in, in stress management for the business people listening to this. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I, I saw a, a thing recently by a gentleman by the name of Joe Stefano, who's one of the head, one of the top strength and conditioning guys in the states, yeah. uh, talking about heart rate variability and breathing. And and he was making the point that when when you want to improve something, um, you know, we carry around a water bottle, or when you want to lose weight, you want to work on your diet. But we breathe on average twenty three thousand times a day. We have twenty three thousand opportunities to to breathe better. And, and if you look at all the benefits that it has, not only for performance, but also your general health. And, 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 I, and I often say this to my clients, there's nothing new under the sun and there's nothing older than breathing. Yeah. But, but we, we almost, we, we go and getting back to the slide, we talk about confidence as an all or nothing thing. We talk about resilience as an all or nothing thing. You have it or you don't. Just the ability to focus on your breathing 10, 10 15 times a day for 10 breaths. Um, that's a skill, that's a discipline, that's a habit. And that, that's what I mean when I say uh, trying to, to almost simplify this process and trying to make it part of your daily life, like you've done with the cold plunging. Um, it, it takes resilience to get into a, into a bath that is, that is minus degree Celsius it, it, or Fahrenheit, as, 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 as your American uh, listeners and viewers would have it. Um, but but it, takes, it takes guts, it takes resilience, it, it takes a daily commitment. Um, and that, that's what I talk about when I say simplifying the process or, or making it accessible on a daily basis rather than making confidence and resilience these things that Tiger has and Michael Jordan has and Tom Brady has. Um, they're also just normal people like you and I in, in, in many respects. Yeah, you're right. Hey, the, the improved breathing and stuff lowered my blood pressure, just as an aside. So the golf scores will help, it'll help your well-being too. Uh, next, what you said is stop worrying about confidence, motivation, resilience. Instead, focus on self-talk. We'll talk about more about that in a minute. Breathing, mm -hmm. then you say your routines. Um, golf is your routine. They're like, oh, here we go, pre-shot routine. Give me your take on routines, please. <laughs> Can I be very honest? Please, I expect that. Um, I'm, I'm in between at the moment because for the first 15 years of my um of my career, I was the guy who said, if, if you if you didn't have a, a specific routine followed with specific steps the same way every single time, you're setting yourself up for failure. And then you come you come with your podcast and with guys like Easy Justice and 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 other guys that you've interviewed and they come out with neuroscientific evidence and says it's it's not really that important. So but um, and, and another guy that you interviewed recently, Garth Milne, a good friend of mine, we work with, with some of the clients in South Africa together. And, and he always says that if he's still teaching the things in 15 years time that he's teaching now, he'd be disappointed because he hasn't learned. So I'm, I'm a little bit in between at the moment. Um, uh, Greg Carton, who's also one of the, the guys that I'm, I'm very fond of that works on the, uh, on the PGA Tour. Um, I, I, I take a leaf out of his book when, when I say that if a routine works for you and, and specific steps work for you, Fantastic, do that. But always figure out why, why you're doing something. With with Dr. with Dr. Easy Justice, you know, he says that something like the the, the putting stroke or rehearsal strokes in, in the putting routine are almost redundant. So I'm I'm a little bit in between in the, at, at the moment. Um, but what, what I what I will say though, and, and the reference to routines in this scenario, I'm a big believer and, and a big um, fan of pre-performance routines but also um, post-performance routines. And when you spend time on, like you do on, on a PGA to a putting green before and after around, um, those guys follow those routines of theirs before and after uh, religiously. There are obviously certain times where, you know, a, a late year of time, they might not be light to, to do their, their stuff, but more often than not, they'll have some form of routine beforehand and after to make sure that they get themselves into an emotional and a psychological state beforehand to play at their best, but then also afterwards to kind of get themselves down from that performance state, check the boxes, whatever it is that they want to do. It might be half an hour, an hour, but when those boxes are ticked, the day is done. I always refer to them as the bookends of your day. Yeah. So, so as far as, as pre-shot routines are concerned, I'm, I'm not 100% uh, for or against at the moment. I'm doing some of my own research. Um, but as far as preparation routines and, and post-performance uh, routines, 
um, you, you'll, you'll have to do a lot of research to get me off those two because I've just seen great athletes do those so well before and after. Um, it, it, it's part of their, their DNA almost. Yeah, I would, if I might just add to that, say the routine for me is, you know, it helps you get into the mental space, but it's more like I think so many golfers just in their pre-shot routine, if you will, just miss basics because they're mm -hmm. skipping things or where they're rushing through there. So for me, the routine is like just putting all your ducks in a row to allow you to be successful. Um, next one, your ability to be present. Uh, that's hard. That, that, that really is hard. And I, I feel like that's almost a, not even a daily challenge. This is a challenge that happens almost by the minute at times. So your take on that. please. I, I was listening to uh, Dr. Justice on, on your podcast and, and a few others and, and he was making a reference that, that if, you, if you take brain scans of, of the, the modern adult as compared to people in the 40s and 50s, um, be, be, uh, uh, psychologists from the 40s and 50s would term all of us schizophrenic in terms of the, the amount of brainwave activity that we have because of social media, phones, uh, computers, uh, you know, the, the incessant need for our attention. And the ability to be present, and, and I actually, um, in around about 2005, 2006, uh, one of my professors, uh, when, when I was doing my master's, um, actually introduced us to a, a protocol called Mindfulness Acceptance Commitment, and, and I still use it till, till this day. And, and, and basically what, what I mean by that is, is your ability to, to be mindful and to be present is simply can, and, and guys like Bill Belichick, uh, some of the great uh, NFL coaches, they refer to be where your feet are. Mm -hmm. and, and, and being mindful and being present is can, can I be present with where my feet are and can I bring my, my thoughts and my feelings back into some form of bodily sensation yeah. and can I notice what's going on around me? And when you listen to guys like Andrew Huberman, he often speaks about coming to your senses. So using your senses to interact with your, your environment a, a little bit better. And, and an example that I'll often give to clients is, and, and I won't take you through the whole exercise, Mark, but what, what I do is I, I set them up, I get them to close their eyes, and I get them to think about their favorite food. And I go through the whole sensory experience of seeing the food, tasting the food, um, you know, uh, feeling the, the steam of, of a great pizza, seeing the cheese, seeing the, you know, creating this beautiful picture. And then all I ask them to do is now for the next uh, 10 seconds or so, I just want you to feel what the floor feels like underneath your feet. Is it hard or is it soft? Uh, is it wooden floor, tiled floor, whatever? And I take them through a few of those sensory uh, experiences just in terms of the sensation through your feet. And it's almost impossible for them not to transition from having this very positive experience of the food that they love to feeling what they feel underneath their feet and being present with a sensory experience. Yeah. And, and if, if, if I can get one lesson across to everybody that's listening and watching is your senses are the best way for you to get back into the present moment. What you can feel, what you can see, what you can hear, smell and taste is always going to be the best way to get back into the present moment. I love that using senses. I mean, if you're on the golf course, golfers, if you just listen for a minute, because you you'll realize how we switch our audio sensor sense off. Listen for the birds. Listen for stuff because we get so wrapped up in the shot in front. You're right. Uh, we we sensory beings. We got five of them. We're not going to taste anything when you hit a golf shot unless you're chewing gum or whatever. But you also don't <laughs> kind of you, you don't you don't taste it either because you're freaking out about stuff going wrong. Um, Absolutely. And, and from, a, from a sensory perspective, I, I always joke with my clients, if you smell something in probably a very tight hole, um, you know, and you, you're squeezing one off, so I, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but but from, a, from a sensory perspective, it's actually quite interesting when, when, you, when you listen to some of the neuro, neuropsychologists speak and some of the neurological research. Um, when, when we are in those fight or flight situations, and, and let's be honest, top golfers and, and even um, you know, age group golfers experience uh, competition as, as very uh, stress, stress provoking and anxiety provoking, your, your auditory feel actually changes from being stereo around you to listening to literally that behind you. And the reason for that is when, however you, however you want to cut the cake, but when our ancestors were trying to run away from something, where do you have to listen? 
there's no point in listening forward because the threat isn't coming from the front. The threat's coming from the back. Okay. So that that's something as simple as where your caddy stands on the tee box giving you advice um, can have a massive impact on when you are in that, that fight or flight response. Yeah, fantastic. Right. Uh, we, gee whiz, I've got a lot to get through here. We've got a lot of stuff to carry, so let me move you along. Final one on this slide. <laughs> Stop worrying about your confidence, motivation, resilience. Instead, focus on self-talk, breathing, et cetera, et cetera. Then the, you say here, your actions, despite having a tough day. What do you mean by that? This, this is probably one of my, one of my favorite uh, ones to talk about. Um, and having spent 15 years with, with top athletes and, and, and top business people and, and learning as I have, and, and I pride myself on my ability to learn. Um, but, but those people will do what they set out to do regardless of the outcome of the day. Yeah. Tiger Woods doesn't doesn't do a, a 50% warm down uh, because he didn't play well. Um, you know, a, a Jordan Spieth doesn't skip on, or, or Justin Thomas, a great example. Uh, him and um, uh, Michael Phelps did a did an inter uh, interview with uh, with the PGA um, uh, podcast and and service a few years ago, uh, where they they were just talking about following the routines after having a bad day as well. Yeah. And I can tell you at this stage, and, and I really back him to come out of his dip, but I can tell you how, how process-driven and routine-driven a guy like Justin Thomas is, I can't see him come, not coming out of this dip because that doesn't matter. For him, it's been a tough year. But I can tell you they're really making a plan of how do we, in spite of a tough day, how do I, or in spite of a tough year in this case, how do we make next year better? They, they don't get caught up on, I, I only do the right things when I've had a good day. And I do the bad things when I've had a tough day. It, it's always the same. Right. Lovely stuff. Okay. One more um, Instagram post. Folks watching on YouTube can see it. It's four tools for better self-talk, which I'm a big one on that stuff. Um, for the folks listening on audio, you can go and find, the, find this on YouTube. Just search for Mark Immelman or just go and search for BVP underscore sport underscore psychology. Um, all right. Four tools for better self-talk. Here are the slides. Number one, be a good friend. Off you go. <laughs> oh, there's only about a thousand things I can say about this, Mark. But but my 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 one is always, um, you know, go, golfers golfers do tend to be harder on themselves than than anybody else, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a bad culture we have in the game. Um, but but the judgment is always if, if I wouldn't say this to a friend, what, why would I say this to myself? <laughs> and my and and my challenge to my clients is always, um, you know, like what what are you trying to do, you know? And 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 our, our deal is always you you can question your performance, but you don't question your talent or your capability to play golf. I, I love it when the when the juniors come off a, a tournament. You were at a junior tournament yesterday. Uh, when the juniors come off and they say, "I can't putt." Yeah. And, and often I'll, I'll help them and I'll work with them for, for, for quite a while on this. But eventually they, they see it from that perspective. I had a tough day putting. It's very different to I can't putt. And you would never say to your best friend on the golf course, you can't putt. Golfers don't do that to each other, but they do it to themselves. Yeah. It's a bad It's a bad. It's an intellectually lazy habit. With that said, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling to the next slide. You say, yet but statement and then the example you give is i'm not able to do blank well but when i come when i compete or i'm not able to do whatever well when i compete yet but i'm not going to give up um embellish elaborate on that a little bit please i'll, I'll give you a good one a, a few years ago when when they banned the uh the the, the belly the belly putters and the and the anchored um long the the, the broom putter Mm -hmm. uh, they did an interview with Adam Scott, and obviously he had to transition from winning a major with with the broomstick to to going back to the to the normal short Scotty. And and they said to him, "How does he feel about it?" And he said, "Well, his attitude is he's starting to practice now so that he can become one of the top putters with the short putter in the next five to ten years." Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not the best putter in the world yet with the short stick, but through my work and through my effort, I'm I'm going to get there. And people can argue, you know, maybe, maybe he's not been the best putter um, over the last 20 years, but you're not going to argue with a guy of his record 
in terms of, of his self-talk around that, in terms of the yet but statement. So that, that's a very practical example. Quickly along those lines, I had Webb Simpson on the show, and he was a victim of that ban. And Webb, oh. just to say, in the interests of looking forward, they actually broke his belly putter. He and his caddy, Paul Tesori, broke the shaft of the putter. So he couldn't go back yeah. yet to look forward. Yeah. Yet, but... Okay, number three, Absolutely. over feelings. Uh, I'll let you read the quip and uh, then elaborate, please. Sure. My, my putting is terrible. I don't know what's going on yet. I'm going to talk to my coach on Monday and try some new drills. For, for me, with, with a lot of athletes that struggle, and, and especially golfers, we, we make close-ended statements. And, and what I mean by that is you don't give yourself any intellectual or mental wiggle room to, to uh, work on something going forward. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of the clients that, that I work with when I start with them, my putting is terrible. That's, that, that's a terrible place to be mentally because you're not giving yourself any space to develop into being something else. Uh -huh, yeah. But when you, when, when you add that yet, um, you know, you're giving yourself options for actions. It's also not living in la-la land. If your putting sucks, it sucks. I'm, I'm not sitting here and saying, well, you know, you've got to feed yourself nonsense and, and just uh, live, live and land positive. That, that's, not, that's not the point either. Acknowledge what your weaknesses are. Um, have a plan of how you're going to work on them and follow the plan and do the work. Love it. Actions over feelings. Emotions lie. huh? You know, take action. Yeah. Emotions are, emotions are useful, but they lie. We can we follow them too much. The final one Absolutely. to improve self-talk. Use this phrase. Stop yourself from entering into a spiral of negativity by saying, off you go. Telling myself these things are not going to help me or change my situation. <laughs> and it's, it, it's, a, it, it's a little bit of self-awareness and, and something that I, that I get my clients to do uh, as, as an exercise when we start working together is, is write down your, your favorite negative thoughts that you say about yourself on the golf course. What, what is your narrative? Because I think, so, so we, you know, golf is a pattern game. We, yeah. we spend time um, identifying patterns in, in strokes and in swings and in body movements. But we spend no time in terms of identifying thought patterns. What, what kind of pattern do I fall into when I'm playing really well? What do I say to myself? Uh, what pattern do I fall into when I'm playing really badly? What do I say to myself? And, and I'll often say to my clients, you know, that um, golf is, is the biggest open book exam that you can write. Because yeah. you can take your notes, you can take your notes on the course with you. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. But we take the the, the decade notes on on the golf course. We take the, the 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 green maps on the golf course. But we we don't write down two or three key mental keys for the day. Getting back to that, reminding myself, uh, working into my narrative. What do I want to say to myself, as opposed to what don't I want to say? What works versus what doesn't? Okay, I want to call. You know, people out, maybe even myself, you know, back in the day or even now. Um, and I'll let you have the final word along these lines because a lot of folks will listen to this going, yeah, you know, that Theo is making so much sense. Or well, they go and get a book. You know, I'm, I'm the famous one for that. You get, you go to the uh, leadership mm -hmm. seminar and you're making notes on notes and notes. Get home, that thing goes in wherever and you never do anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I want to say this, you know, working on the mental game. You'll hear folks, all grand intentions. I've got to work on my mental game, but they, ne they never really work on it or it's short lived. Absolutely. And I want to say that this is probably, this is harder than adjusting your golf swing, doing it consistently well. So I'll let you motivate folks with your, with your, your parting shot. Like I said in the beginning, Mark, I, I think it's a, it's a process of simplifying. You know, you, you have so many fantastically smart people out there who are, who are at the forefront of research. They, they're sharing uh, unbelievable knowledge. But if there's one common thread through all of that, Andrew Huberman, Easy Justice, uh, the guys you talk about, it, the, the simple thing is often the best thing. So my motivating factor to my clients is always pick one thing. Pick one thing, stick to that one thing, and don't try something else until you haven't tried that thing and it's become a habit. So you can pick cold plunge, you can pick breathing, you can pick self-talk, you can pick visualization. I mean, there are thousands of options out there. Pick something that resonates with you, pick something that is simple for you to do that fits into your day and, and just keep on doing it. 
because you you and I both know that that with the top sporting talent and and with the top golfers out there, they they don't try and reinvent the wheel. They they just do if, if it's a drill, a putting drill. They do that putting drill, a very simple drill, uh, religiously. They do it day in and day out, and they stick to it. I, I always tell the, the clients that I work with, you know, that the the thing about the top fifty golfers in the world, they all have a different way of doing it, but they all know why they do it, and they do it religiously and consistently. So true. Tiger Woods, to this day, even now, before a round of golf, sticks two tees in the ground, width of the putter head. Right hand only, hits three footers in between there. I don't care what event it is, what day it is, does it every single time. Right, Theo, you're a gem, my friend. Uh, thank you for eventually joining me. I'm so embarrassed I was so late to the party. Um, but along, that, along those lines, please share with folks where they can find you. Uh, website, social media, because I'm sure there will be some folks. It'll it'll be amazing if they do. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, Instagram is BVP underscore sport underscore psychology. Uh, our website is bvpsp.com. And uh, nobody that's listened to this or watched this is allowed to share what BVP is. It stays between us, uh, bvpsp.com. Um, and then uh, DM us for anything and, and please share, share some thoughts, uh, share some ideas. Um, I'm always open to learning. It's something I pride myself on and I learned, I've been learning a lot from you, from your podcast and it's uh, been an absolute honor to be featured. Thanks a lot, Mark. Oh, well, I uh, think you're being modest. Uh, a lot of folks have learned a whole lot from you too. But I guess, you know, we're always learning, aren't we? Every, every time I turn the microphone Absolutely. on someone on the show, I learn something new. Uh, it doesn't matter who I've spoken to. No, same, same here, and, and, and keep on doing the great job that you are, and thank you for, for everything that you're sharing. Uh, it means a lot to a lot of people in the industry, and, and myself in particular, so thank you so much. Appreciate you, my friend. Take care. Have a good one. Thanks, Mark. Thanks.